are large suppliers to big companies like Nestle and other multi, big multinationals that are in India. And we are also big suppliers to big Indian companies. And the one theme that I see when I go and meet the CEOs and I meet the, uh, the directors responsible for, for, for running those companies is that, you know, all of these companies achieved great growth on the back of great price points. You know, a five rupee pack or a 10 rupee pack or a, or a 20 rupee pack, right? And these prices have been constant now for several years, some, sometimes even in some cases of some products, even decades. And uniformity in price, therefore, has no bigger meaning than to a context like this. And I'm sure this is also the context of several people sitting inside this room. Is that how is it that in a, in a, in a situation as fluid as in today's environment, where commodity prices are swinging up, uh, where you have so many uncertainties, how is it that you have uniformity of pricing and a uniform, uniformity of price? And the one experience that, uh, you know, I come back with, frustrated with sometimes, is most companies uh, think that the, the way they can manage price is by managing price of procurement. And therefore, there's always this pressure on companies like us to keep the prices down. And, and you know, it's here that my advice to you is this happens in large companies and in medium restaurants possibly and in small restaurants as well, is because you choose to manage your profitability by managing individual compartments. I manage cost of procurement, the chef manages the cost of food, someone else manages the cost of labor, someone else manages the cost of electricity. So each one, when he or she is trying to optimize each of these individual buckets, the company thinks that's the best way to go forward. I think the classical supply chain theory will tell you that by optimizing the sum of the parts, you don't optimize the whole. A restaurant is never the most efficient when each one of these departments is meeting its functional goals. Someone who is the owner, the manager, or a director in a responsible position has to look at how you optimize the whole. So I, let me give you an example. You know, we have a product uh, and I won't name it, and I won't talk about the industry as well, which costs more than, let's say, the competition product. But our product takes out an entire process from the manufacturing, whether it's, let's say, preparation of dough or whether it is preparation of, uh, you know, the frying product. The point is that whose KRA or whose responsibility is it to be able to to see that this product is, uh, is introduced into that company or into that restaurant. Because one part of it, the price, the, the purchase department won't, won't, won't support it. And the other part, where that an entire process is coming out, is nobody's caring. When you organize yourself in a particular way, you choose the consequences. And one of the consequences of the way conventionally restaurants have been run or companies have been run is the fact that they are where they are today. And if, as new restaurants and new you know, people coming into this industry, we try and copy an old model, we tend to make the same mistakes. Mm -hmm.